Uh, you've written lots of books uh, about science. Do you believe that, that television and, and the Cosmos series being the most spectacular and popular series of its kind, do you still believe that the popular medium is the way, to, no matter how many issues of Scientific American are sold or, or, or whatever, that this is the way to, to influence people's views about science? I think that television is a tremendously uh, useful and powerful and underused medium for exciting people about science, for eliciting their sense of wonder, and for teaching some uh, science facts, but mainly about getting people excited so they will go off and teach themselves or uh -huh. take courses or something of that sort. Cosmos we never imagined would be as successful as it was. It's been seen by more than half a billion people in over 60 countries worldwide. And uh, it's still being seen. And I still get uh, letters and I'm stopped on the street by people who say how it changed their lives, how they were, uh, women especially, say they were taught that science wasn't for them, that they were too mm -hmm. stupid for science, that Cosmos got them excited about science and they went back and now they're a, oceanographer or a microbiologist or whatever it is, th there is a tendency to uh, discourage people from science, especially in, in junior high and high school, who are well fitted for science. We have a kind of fear of science and part of the reason is that science is able to uh, show what constitutes a wrong answer. And unlike uh, some other fields where no matter what you say might be right, here in science you can really make a mistake and, uh, and have to defend your, your view before other people who can actually draw upon facts to disprove it. So it's, uh, it makes some people nervous, the people who want the world to conform to their wishes rather than to the universe's yeah. own internal reality. I, I, you, you told me when we last met out in December in California, and and, and Andrea and your wife, uh, was, you were telling me that you were working on a movie. Are you at liberty to talk about that at all? I, I can talk about it a little, a little bit. bit. A new movie it's based a, on Contact, your book? Ba based on my novel Contact, about first contact with extraterrestrial intelligence via uh, the receipt of a complex radio message. It's uh, a Warner Brothers movie. It's starring Jodie Foster and... Uh, it's uh, in production. Uh, primary photography will begin uh, sometime later this year, and uh, it's unclear when it should be uh, uh, in the theaters, but uh, late 97 at the earliest. Can you teach science through this movie? Is, it, is, uh, is there I'm, certainly wor I'm certainly working hard to, uh, to get across uh, some of the wonder and some of the method. Mm -hmm. of science, and I think we're going to gonna have some of that. I, you know, the big screen is uh, an amazing tool for teaching the, the wonders of, uh, of astronomy, especially. Uh, I, I can't wait to see how some of the ideas that we're having are going to materialize on the, on the big screen. You know, the Kubrick film, 2001, The Space Odyssey, I thought was a milestone in teaching science. There, but things that went on in there that were absolutely you know, about gravity and space travel and things like that. Uh, right, right. It's amazing how 2001 stands up today. It doesn't look the least unbelievable. Yeah. Whereas 2010, its successor with a non-Sanley Kubrick director, looked obsolescent when it came out. Uh, and today is, uh, yeah. is just terribly dated. So y you can do these things well and you can do them poorly and we're, we're hoping with contact to do it well. So, so you'd, be, you'd be happy to have the 2001 success that that movie had, <laughs> that, that, that level. I'd, I'd, I'd be happy to come anywhere within shouting distance of 2001. That was an extraordinary movie. And, and in, on, a, on a serious side, though, but, but this is a good way to, teach, uh, to reach the public and to teach science. And, and Movies and television can do amazing things in in teaching at least some science, but in mainly in making science accessible and convincing people that they don't have to worry that they're too stupid to understand it or that it's stuff that only nerds and geeks are interested in. I think everybody is interested in many of the issues of science and just a question of getting it to them in an accessible way. Carl, stay well. Thank you for Thank joining us. Thank you so us. much. Our pleasure talking to you. Thanks again for coming on the program. Carl Sagan, of course, is a professor of astronomy and space sciences at Cornell University in Ithaca and author of an extremely good book, The Demon Haunted World, 
Science is a Candle in the Dark, published by Random House. Uh, 